Hello. Hello. Oh, sir, he's a bit Sanjit, sir. I've never heard of it. Oh, he's a bit clear, sir. He's a clear, sir. He's a clear, sir. He's a clear,
हेलो 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 गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी for national webinar biodiversity loss restoration and conservation strategies organized by department of botany hin college and department of zoology sipadhar college in collaboration with eco club dhin college respected dr biman hajurika principal dhin college inaugurator dr pradeep chandra deka principal sipajhar college our esteemed resource person professor vijay nio department of life science dibrugarh university participants from different parts of india faculty members students and audience i i on behalf of organizing committee national webinar on biodiversity loss restoration and conservation strategies welcome you all and i hope your particip participation will be helpful for everyone now i request dr biman hajarika principal dhing college to give the welcome address biman hajarika sir good morning good morning everyone this is the second webinar of department of botany of our college i welcome you all to today's webinar being organized on a very pertinent and important topic 
biodiversity loss, restorations, and conservation strategies. At the outset, I would like to welcome esteemed resource persons of today's webinar. Professor Vijay Nehru, Department of Life Sciences, Dibrugar University. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Pradeep Sandadeta, who is going to inaugurate this webinar. He is the present principal of Chipperjar College. Not going into details of this, to this webinar and its topic, I would like to say little light on what is biodiversity and what is biodiversity loss and how one could restore biodiversity aspects. Biodiversity means variety of life on earth at all levels. And world is being threatened by the loss of biodiversity that imbalances world, atmosphere, and geo circumstances. Extinction of different species worldwide as well as local area is really heartening and dangerous scenario. So, if you look into the Conservation strategies, which can be taken up by various agencies, government organizations, and institutions. And for these government legislations, nature preservations at all levels, restorations of habitat, captive breeding and seed banks of different species, reduce invasive species are suggested. So without spending much time, I again welcome you all to this particular webinar being hosted by Department of Botany, King College and Department of Botany and Life Sciences, Sipazar College. Welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, on behalf of organizing the thank Dr. Biman Hajarika, principal of Thing College, for his welcome address. Now I straight away would start the session. And I, for this, I now request Professor Bijonio to deliver his lecture. So before delivering his lecture, good morning, Bijonio. Good morning. Before delivering his lecture, good morning. So before delivering uh, uh, Bijonio's lecture, I would give you, give you a brief description about Professor Bijoyni of, of Guwahati uh, Dibrugar University. Professor Bijoyni has done his master's in botany 
from Guwahati University and PhD in Life Sciences from Dibrugar University, Assam. A postdoc fellow from Southwest University, Chongqing, People's Republic of China, Dr. Niu joined as the assistant professor in the Department of Life Science 1994. He has expert expertise in cytogenetics and plant breeding. Besides, he has also interest in conservation biology, biochemistry, and molecular biology. Dr. Nyo is keen in doing research in indigenous and lesser known minor fruits of Northeast India, and he successfully completed several major research projects funded by various agencies such as UGC, DBT, ICMR, SURB, ASTEC, etc. Dr. Niu was awarded prestigious Chinese government scholarship to conduct his postdoctoral research in conservation biology in Southwest University, Chongqing, People's Republic of China, where he developed a digital database of Jin Yun Mountain, baby again from People's Republic of China. He has more than 55 research papers and book chapters to his credit. He is also members of various national and international scientific societies. Presently, Dr. Neo is a professor in the Department of Life Science, Dibrugo University, Assam. So here's a brief resume about Dr. Bijonio. Now I request our respected resource person, Professor Bijonio, to start his deliberation. And I hope you will get a lot of information from his deliberation. And one more announcement I would like to make before Bijonio starts. If you have any questions, you can write it in the chat box and after his deliberation is complete, we will try to uh, get the answer from our resource person. So please, uh, Professor Bijonio, you can start your deliberation. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sanjeev Nath, and uh, for your introductory part. I'd also like to thank Dr. Biman Hazarika, Department of Botany, uh, I mean the principal Dean College, and uh, Dr. P.C. Deka of uh, Sipajar College uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity to deliver interact with you. So uh, I'll directly go to the uh, my presentation. Okay, can you see it, uh, Dr. Nath? Hello. Yeah, we can see it clearly. Okay, okay. So uh, I'd like to start with this first slide. Uh, uh, I'm going to deliver the biodiversity loss, restoration and conservation strategies. Okay, as uh, uh, Dr. Biman Hazarika has already said the meaning of biodiversity. It's not only the uh, it's not only the conserving the the different life forms uh, found on this earth, but to uh, see the prioritized species also sometimes. So it requires a lot of strategies, uh, restoration uh, strategies as well as the conservation. As you know, the, we have uh, as you know, we are having the different kind of species, different kind of subspecies and varieties also, and uh, ecotypes and a lot of species 
and this specially uh, this picture was taken in the Namdapa Reserve Forest. Tiger Project is there in Arunachal Pradesh, and that is one of the hotspot for the butterflies. And so many colorful butterfly of different species are there. Just to say the biodiversity or the biological diversity is an umbrella term. Under this, you can include any form of life. So important thing is the it was long back in 1926 when Vavilov classified the different centers of germplasm origin, centers of origin, and the centers for genetic diversity also. And among these, if you see the second one, the Indian Center and Indian Man Malayan Center, these are two, uh, two very important sites, and we fall under this category that uh, the um, mega biodiversity center is also there in our region, especially the northeastern region, the Himalayan foothills, and uh, that area is also under this region. It harbors a lot of different kind of animals, different kind of form. Uh, I mean, the forms of animal. Uh, it means the the genetic diversity is incredibly very high. Lot of if we, if I see a life form, it means the it must have some kind of genes on it, and the the diversity of gene also represent the uh, by diversity of that biological resources. <laughs> so uh, as you know the sorry sorry as you know the uh, this is the variety of life and its processes as uh, described in the Keystone Center and biological diversity is an umbrella term it, we have the genetic diversity, we have the species diversity, we have the ecological diversity also. It means that we have, especially I'm referring to the Northeastern region, lot of ecological diversity where it harbors a lot of biological form. So uh, under biodiversity, this, uh, I mean, the terms are frequently uh, used under the photographs. Anyway, the, we frequently say that we are on a hotspot. We are sitting on a hotspot. And what is hotspot? It was May 1998 who described the 21 hotspot in the world on the basis of endemic species richness. And today we have the 34 biodiversity hotspot. Now question is what is endemic species? So the space is restricted to a particular region only, particular area only. It's called the endemic species. It means you cannot find that species in other areas. Maybe uh, two, three areas it may include, but very restricted to a particular area. For, uh, for example, the um, rhinoceros unicorn is, that is restricted to this area only. So that is also an, one of the uh, endemic species to Assam. Similarly, and 46% of the total world flora uh, is endemic and found in the hotspot areas only. Now, the question is why hotspot areas are under threat? It means they are trade because they have diverse habitat types, unique range of habitat types. Means there are a lot of diversity and there is a continuous uh, struggle for survival and of different species. That is why they are under imminent threat. Also, they have very specialist species. <laughs> endemic specialist species that is adapted to a specific adaptive condition only. And that adaptive condition is controlled by the different factors like the soil condition, the uh, rainfall, humidity, the microbial interaction, and so many things are involved there. So 
this species only grow on the particular area only. Similarly, the important gene pool, these hotspots are also important gene pool. When I say the gene pool, gene pool means the total number of genes present in a particular species. It may be the beneficial genes, or maybe the deleterious genes, or, or maybe uh, not uh, uh, economically viable genes, but they constitute a genes, gene pool. So coming to the another point, why I am taking this indigenous knowledge system or the our uh, traditional heritage to this point for the conservation or uh, taking the strategies. India is known for its uh, very rich heritage of biological diversity, as all of you know, and it's having uh, almost uh, more than 91,000 species of animals and 45,000, 46,000 species of plants and biological, um, different biogeographic region. Similarly, uh, more than 6,500 species local plants are used prominently in the indigenous healthcare system. So this is a recorded uh, plant species anyway. Now this slide, okay. Uh, we have, as you know, that uh, Assam and adjacent Southeast Asia is uh, completely dependent on the rice cultivation and the uh, rice is the staple food uh, in our region. Similarly, uh, pulses, fruits, and different species. And uh, they have also the wild relatives. Wild relatives means they are not economically viable, but they exist as a, as a, uh, and the relatives of the uh, a particular species. These are also very important because, uh, because uh, these wild relatives or the distant species, they contain certain genes. They contain certain area, I mean the characters, uh, which may be useful for the cultivated varieties in near future. For example, uh, rice is frequently attacked by some kind of diseases and we can find this disease resistance character from the wild species and that can that uh, character can be transferred to the cultivated varieties of rice through breeding or some other techniques uh, or uh, recommending DNA technology, RDNA technology. This is possible nowadays. So protecting wild relatives are also very important. Uh, is it audible, Dr. Nath? Hello? Yeah, yeah, it's audible. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So, really audible. So uh, why we are losing the genes? That is very important thing. We should understand that because of, mostly because of the urbanization. Modernization is another tech, uh, cause of uh, gene erosion. Gene erosion means like child erosion, we are losing genes from the nature. The same way, once you know the gene is lost from this art, we cannot take it back to the art. Because till date we cannot we cannot synthesize a new gene for using uh, some uh, using for mankind. We we are only the modifying the genes. For example, the genetically modified crops. These are the modification we have done with the genes only. So all the characters are controlled by ATCG. You know the adenine time, the nitrogenous basis, and but still. We, we, know, we do not know how to prepare a new gene, new life form. Therefore, once a gene is lost, it's gone forever. It cannot be taken back to uh, the nature. Similarly, monoculture is another region. You know, the monoculture means the cultivation of a single species. Besides rice, we are cultivating tea, especially if you see the upper Assam, the, we are cultivating only tea. A lot of jungle has been cleared to uh, cultivate tea only. And tea, you know, its uh, scientific name is Camellia sinensis. Uh, and uh, it has two, three uh, variants. And we are cultivating these varieties only just uh, for the economic purposes. And along with the uh, tea, we grow on some shade trees. 
in that way, a lot of species, a lot of wild species, a lot of endemic species or the specialist species are also uh, destroyed. And uh, fossil fuel exploitation is another reason that when, when we uh, prepare, when we develop a rig to take out the uh, oil from the, uh, from the soil, it, it uh, destroyed the adjacent area and for a long time. For several years, it will remain um, uh, infertile. That is another reason uh, the scientist has expressed that concern for the oil rig and the exploitation of fossil fuel in the biodiversity hotspots also. Instead, uh, again, the, we have introduced some uh, foreign flora. This is possibly uh, also uh, applicable to the animals also different type of varieties of uh, different varieties of fish and other animals has been introduced just to uh, just to uh, make uh, meet the demand of increasing population but in case of foreign flora there are a lot of plants and animal uh, plants that has been introduced in the uh, hotspot or the biodiversity hotspot area uh, just to have uh, faster for their faster growth and other things uh, for example, eucalyptus, for example, acacia, these plants are not native to our place and mostly the, uh, from the advanced countries, from Australia and other countries, they were introduced, but it has become a part of our biodiversity nowadays, but it also competes with the local flora. And uh, that is another region. And some of other plants like Arzimon, Mexicana and some, uh, there are some herbs also that are also being introduced to this area and it has become weeds and competing with the cultivated varieties. A lot of flora and fauna have been over exploited for their uh, aesthetic value or the medicinal value. And uh, if ha uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, this is called a biopiracy and a uh, lot of uh, fruits, flowers, and other medicinal parts of plants has been uh, already smuggled. And uh, this is a common practice going on, though we have a lot of uh, regulation, a lot of laws, and other uh, implementation procedure is very slow. Anyway, climate change and desertification is another thing uh, that is also a part of the threatened process, uh, developmental, as I said, the development dams and other things, uh, hydroelectric projects, these are the very important thing. And these also uh, um, thing are a matter of concern. New emerging biotechnologies, we are giving more stress to the biotechnologies or the, in advance, uh, the, uh, how to, splice a gene and convert it to a, another organism to have the, that particular tree. That has also affected the traditional use or the conventional way of improving the varieties like plant breeding, animal breeding. This has also been, uh, in, uh, has impact on the uh, other processes. <coughs> we have, as I said, the policy and legal administrative measures, but uh, it, it will take some time to implement these things. You know, the IUCN has a category, this is uh, known to you, the extinct endangered, critically endangered, vulnerable and uh, rare. These things are the common thing uh, we know, but uh, we usually neglect. We usually, there are a lot of, uh, I mean, the orchid species, you know, in the Northeastern region, and most of them are vulnerable because they are, uh, their germination condition is very slow. Orchid has become very, very, some of species has become very rare. The major impact, I mean, the major cause of this, uh, I mean, the, problem is that orchid seeds are very small seeds, smallest seeds in the plant kingdom. 
and they do not germinate until and unless they're, they're infected by some fungus or the bacteria. In that way, though they produce a lot of number, a lot of seeds, they cannot germinate. That is why another problem and uh, scientists looking into it and uh, conservation, conservation of orchids requires that there's a kind of the tissue culture and tissue culture of orchid is very popular nowadays only because of that we can cultivate these seeds in the artificial medium in the laboratory condition. Okay, conservation strategies usually the conservation uh, is something like the uh, ex situ and in situ. All of you uh, know that uh, in situ conservation in the within the natural habitat condition, they they are allowed to grow in the natural conditions, and so that they get the environment, they get the eco climate and the soil and other things. And there are some species which cannot grow; they need some extra care. They are conserve in the in situ condition, like in gene banks. Uh, we can have the gene bank, we can have the in vitro culture lab, I mean the tissue culture lab, and they need protection and uh, they need uh, continuous attention. And that is why they're uh, not in the habitat, natural habitat, they are cultivated in the uh, uh, outside the natural condition and that way they can be conserved for several, uh, I mean the hundreds of years. Seeds, arts and the other things are also preserved. This is the conventional way how to conserve the germplasm. Now I'm going to talk something about the, uh, uh, I mean the software or the, some other uh, databases which can help in conserving the germplasm in near future. And you must take uh, the help of the indigenous knowledge system in this way. And most of you know the indigenous knowledge system is the knowledge system or the, the total knowledge, uh, I mean the uh, practice in a particular community. As you know, we have more than 500 500 ethnic communities in the Northeastern Asia. And uh, they always practice, they always rely on the biodiversity around them for their daily needs. There are a lot of places where there is no sign of allopathic medicines and they are completely depend on the traditional medicines. So, Indigenous knowledge system can play a very important role in conserving the biodiversity because they are rich biogenetic heritage. They're working, they take medicine from the living organisms. Also, it is a traditional knowledge. It's in their culture. It's, uh, the practice is their culture. It's, uh, I mean, the handed over to the next generation, one to the under generation in a traditional way. And uh, for sometimes, uh, for some of them, it is a means of livelihood. That is why it is important. They make medicine with the available resources only. And if you know, uh, more than 70% drug discovery based on the native medicinal plant knowledge. It is coming from the third world countries like India, Bangladesh, uh, Africa and something like this. And there is always a gene flow. The northern, uh, the countries present in the northern globes are called the uh, technology rich area, technology rich country, whereas our uh, areas are called the uh -huh. area. And there is a continuous flow of genes from the southern part of the globe to the northern part. So that is why the major drug discovery based on the traditional knowledge only. <clears throat> so it is a prospective field for the further research. The threat regarding the indigenous knowledge system is a hidden treasure. It's not in the written form, not in the book form, or not uh, in the database uh, like in the computer. 
and non-organized practice only a few person knows what to use and they are uh, very secretive they cannot they do not usually share the knowledge with the common people because it is their livelihood and scientifically this knowledge is unexplored and unexamined okay it means uh, the medicine works on some people may maybe it is yeah, ineffective to other people so that is the way we we must validate it it is necessary to validate the things with the um, in the scientific way no scientific validation has been done except a few plants so that is why um, biopiracy is a very common practice and a lot of people comes and takes medicine and they since they are technology rich area and they, they can find out the active bio component active molecule or the novel molecule present in a particular decoction of a plant so uh, important thing is how can we record the indigenous knowledge system for conservation of biodiversity of a particular mega biodiversity region or the hotspot so this is a process we are, we are working on the evaluation of historical as well as com contemporary knowledge on the ethnobiology how the people use the plants and animals for their uh, medicinal and food and other way <laughs> not only medicine you know uh, lot of probiotics are there and a lot of a uh, lot of uh, plants you know, which are very effective in the in the human uh, physiology these are also traditionally used and now it has been established the probiotics from the traditional oh. knowledge system similarly it may request survey collection and documentation and uh, uh, database okay central government has taken some steps to oh. collect the knowledge in the particular traditional knowledge system uh, library but uh, it's not very effective and uh, the knowledge is very huge you know on the basis of this once it is you can validate the uh, the uses of bio resources from the traditional knowledge system we can have a, a biodiversity based enterprises okay and it can give the uh, benefits of the uh, ipr to the indigenous people also so just to begin with the uh, conservation process we need to have some biodiversity informatics the taking help of the manage or the manage the biodiversity information in the computer way or the with the help of the computer it's called the biodiversity informatics <coughs> sorry um we need to take have a integrated multidisciplinary knowledge base why multidisciplinary it must have some uh, components from the social events from the from its community based knowledge from its scientific based knowledge so it requires lot of uh, lot of uh, collaboration to discover a particular therapeutics so data might come from the scientific exploration what we do right down or literature is also also there and we can do it Have, have some question is to the traditional medicine medicine practitioner or the, there are some other databases also for the um, traditional knowledge and ultimately if you compile all the data a new information will come out okay this is if you can see clearly and this is the different components of the database it might have it must have the chemical information the chemical name what kind of chemical is there and uh, how we have extracted the chemicals what is the base of the uh, 
chemical structure. Then the species information about the family, uh, scientific name, and uh, what habitat, synonyms, and uh, uh, different kind of uh, information, also technical. And uh, uh, multimedia format uh, we can use and ethnomedicinal information, what kind of parts used, what time it is used, what quantity and uh, application method. These things are very important just to validate the traditional knowledge in a scientific way. It must have primary data, primary data, and uh, secondary data. Uh, primary data comes from usually the medicinal plants and the preparation method and other things by interviewing the practitioners. And secondary data is completely scientific and it includes the taxonomy, phytochemistry, bioactivity, biogeography, etc. Uh, this is one of the this is one of the, the medicine plant database that I prepared for the operation region. Uh, and remember, this is for not for the, all the bioresources, only the medicinal plant database, traditionally used medicinal database. And it is having um, the home page, then the, about the medicinal plant, different names. And interestingly, you can, uh, you can find it in the uh, University website. If you go to the life science department, the medicinal plant database is still there. <clears throat> Uh, this was a small project from the UCC, uh, prepared long back and uh, uh, with the help of the, the software, the, like the MySQL and other things, which comes with the MS Word and the MS, uh, these were used here, uh, which comes usually as free software, and these were used to produce, uh, prepare this database. And uh, we put the local names also uh, because you know one species is known as different uh, different synonyms or other local names. So sometimes people are confused with the, uh, its uh, real scientific name. That is why area-wise the local name is completely different. That's that is one of the very important points when we study the indigenous knowledge system or the traditional knowledge system. <coughs> one of the spaces, <coughs> you know, the ponyal and uh, its photograph is there. You can enlarge the photographs and see when flowering time, what is the flowering time and uh, the, um, uh, what kind of, uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, the chemicals are there and its description. We included the upper sum only, and that is why the a little bit uh, eco. Uh, I mean, the, about the different districts and the important uh, milestones and uh, these things has been also included there. We had a feedback form, feedback form, and uh, one can contact me and give me the, some uh, some you know the information regarding the. Uh, local spaces found in a particular area that we have might have missed. So this is the administrative form and feedback form. So it is a kind of, you know, uh, writing a book in the digital form. Uh, similar to the book, you, you, can, you can publish, you can revise book after five years or two years, three years. <laughs> it is a tedious task, but uh, for this one digital uh, book, you can make it uh, very easily and quite easy. Just to and to interaction is also very easy. Along with that, we, we included the digital herbarium seeds. Uh, we collected some of the species, and uh, that herbarium is maintained in the Debrugger University. And we took photographs and. Uh, Nowadays, uh, from anywhere on this globe, uh, this digital herbarium can be checked and it can be compared with the collection if somebody has made. The benefits, you know, this is a very small step 
This is a very small step towards the conservation of the species. I'm not talking about the prior species, important species, all the species present in a small area. And uh, being a member of biodiversity board, I can tell you this is a form of biodiversity register that we are preparing here for in Assam. So information is easily accessed by a touch of a button. And after some day, you'll get the uh, people's biodiversity register for Assam also. And uh, by prospecting, once you got you get the information about a particular plant, you can go for the uh, biotechnological work or the bioprocessing. It can be a common platform for scientists, researchers, and local communities. So, this small step can help the environmental decision process. Policymakers also, they can have the information, and ultimately, action can be taken on a particular or the uh, species. It means why I am telling these things because in nature, uh, in in I mean the in near future, uh, the college or the university student take up a small project to take some photographs and have the de description of a particular plant and. It can they, can they can prepare a small project on the digital database of a particular area, particular jungle, or particular uh, small area. In that way, we can we can compile the data of a subdivision, district, and other things. So it is very important. Once you must know, uh, I mean, you must we must know what to protect, what to conserve. If we do not have idea there what kind of plants are there in a particular area, so it is useless to think about the conservation. Conservation is a broad term. So we must know that there are some priority species or the specialist species. That is why uh, this database or the uh, data about the plants present in a particular area is very important. You know, we have done some fruit species, uh, not, uh, these are called the lesser minor fruits or the lesser known fruits, not like apple, banana and something like this. Some fruits which are very neglected, but always in our tradition. And we could find some Species like uh, Garcinia, you know what is Garcinia? It's uh, Thakera, Ahomia Thakera, Thakera species. There are several species of Garcinia, and which is very important for the weight loss. And we usually, traditionally, we take this uh, the um, uh, Thakera with the, as a mixture as a refresh drink and something like this. This was used since time immemorial. And with this aim, I started working with the Garcinia species. We could find seven species of Garcinia here in, from in Assam. And uh, we could also isolate it, the uh, chemical that is important for our uh, weight loss. And this is quite effective. We did with uh, some animal experiments. We done and uh, found that uh, it is very effective in losing by losing their weight. In that way, there are a lot of species. There are a lot of fruit species. I'm interested in the fruits only to find out the antioxidant and the inflammatory substances or antibacterial substances. So uh, there are a lot of fruits there. You know mm, that can be isolated and the phytochemical studies are required. You know, most of the people developing country, 80% of the developing countries, uh, they take the herbal medicine compared to us. And 20, 
I mean, the 25 to 35% of the American people did rely on the herbal medicine. Similarly, more uh, the statistics, uh, it is the old statistics, maybe it is too high nowadays. And uh, US patents, 49% on medicinal plants. It is based on the traditional knowledge system only. As I say, 60% synthetic drugs, allopathic drugs have roots in the medicinal plants only. By 2050, global market on the medicinal plants will be US dollar, 5 trillion. And we are contributing hardly 0.4% of the total uh, market, global market of 80 billion dollars. Even China is quite uh, going uh, better than us. And uh, so this is the economy of the total herbal medicine, plant-based medicine, and the, or the, also the phytotherapy. Now people are rely on the phytotherapy drugs or the active component coming from the biological resources. Uh, some of the common plant drugs, these are common. Uh, known so with this i thank all of you for patient hearing and i again thank uh, dr sanjeev kumar nath uh, dr biman hazarika dr pc dekka and the eco club of dean college thank you very much hello Ah, thank you, Professor Bijanio, for your resourceful and very useful, and I would say informative deliberation on biodiversity loss, restoration, and conservation strategies. And I think you have presented it in a very um, lucid manner which could be understood by anybody or those uh, which who belongs to other branches of uh, science or arts. Now, I also thank uh, our participants for the patient's hearing. So by that, uh, I also request our participants uh, to ask questions to Professor Bijonio, and for this, I request you unmute one by one. And if you have any queries or any question, you can talk to our resource person. Thank you, participants. So you can start now. You unmute one by one, and you can ask question to our resource person. <laughs> Hello? You are not clear for two. Yeah. Anybody? Uh, no. I think network is there's a network yeah, problem. Yeah. So next right. anybody else? If you would like to have any query or question. Okay, you can collect the question and also you can mail to me, okay. So participants, I request if you have any question, you can write it to me, but uh, uh, Professor Bijanio, there is a question for you from the YouTube. Okay. Uh, so I am putting the question. I have written it for, uh, from the yeah. YouTube. Yeah. So it was asked by P. Da Dr. P. Dasbora. 
it's for you uh, bijanyo how much we should use thakara for weight loss or how uh, is this thakara is garcinia is useful for weight loss okay okay interesting question and uh, you know the thakara or the uh, garcinia is uh, unique to have a chemical compounds called aca hydroxy citric acid and hydroxy citric acid found in very uh, composed of elements only hello uh, yeah it's audible uh, yeah so hydroxy citric acid directly interfere with the with the uh, you know the producing process and in that way it is a complicated process but it it, have, it interfere with the uh, fat producing process and in that way uh, it stops the enzyme responsible for producing fats in our body and in that way uh, garcinia is uh, responsible for weight loss and it is it has already been established and you know nowadays the garcinia tablets are also available in the market and uh, a um, lot of companies are working on it and but axial dose of garcinia is very important uh, how much dose is required and we did, we work with the animal animal model on leader winter rat and found that it is promising without side side effect garcinia is it can reduce the fats in the body thank you thank you very much so here's another question for you uh, professor okay. vijanyo okay uh, the thakara uh, garcinia means uh, in assam is we term it as thakara thakara so how many types of thakara are found in assam we have collected six types know? we have collected Name some of them yeah uh, if you see in assam is we can call the kuzi thakara bor thakara rupohi thakara kauri thakara eneke total apunar pray 6 ta species moi paiso kintu kamrupor phale aru duta species ase boli moi gom paiso he total mili 7 ta ba 8 ta species hobo pare so thank you very much so participants if you have any question or otherwise we will we have almost come to the end i think there is a question from somebody yes please anybody Yeah. Okay, there is a push network problem. If you have any question, you can ask DJ. It's not audible. There is a technical problem, I think. So here is another question for you, Professor Bijanio.
ट्रेडिशनल फेस्टिवल but uh, there is no organized distribution of thekera and that that can be done in between by some uh, by some people by some farmers and we have advised some people in the upper uh, assam in the tinsukia and the dumma area to distribute thekera and this is they're having the uh, at the opportunity it can be a good market for them Yeah, it's only it's only But we don't have take uh, a commercial. So, Professor Vijayan, very much thank you. Thank And you. if any participants have question, you can communicate with me. I can I will just deliver or send it to our Vijayan Professor Vijayan or directly you can communicate with him. Do you have any questions? Uh, before we end up, we could just show you here. It's the Department of Geology of Sipadhar College. I would request you to offer vote of thanks. We could just show you here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. A very good uh, morning to everyone. Respect the principal, sir. And uh, hello. Yeah, yeah. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Respect the principal, sir, and honourable uh, speaker. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, on behalf of Department of Geology, Sipazar College, and Department of Botany, Ding College, I take this opportunity to thank. the persons uh, who have given immense effort this week i want to thank dr biman hadurika sir principal of ding college and dr pradeepan reka sir principal of sipazar college for allowing us to organize this event my i would like to thank my uh, respected uh, speaker of today's session uh dr bijoy nayak sir professor department of life science dibrugarh university is valuable and very rich deliberation actually this is uh, this is the need of the time that we go for the conservation because we have seen many loopholes in our system due to the conservation uh, deficiency actually in the northeast region we must have a definite plan for conservation because we are so much reach but at the same time we are using the uh, species and everything for our uh, bad behavior i would like to thank uh, dr sanjeev kumar nath sir and my colleague mrs mimita mondo and mr peter kumar dr koshi for their sincere efforts to make this webinar a success finally i would like to thank I have uh, forgotten to unmute anyone. Please bear. Uh, now I would like to again thank you. Again in the future. Now I would like to end of this minute. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Dibharti Sagya. And uh, it's uh, last announcement before we end up. So you will be provided a uh, feedback link. Participants, you fill it up, you will get the certificates. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Professor Bijanio. Thank you. So thank we you. end up. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh. Thank you.